Hello, my name is Derek Scott. I'm a psychotherapist and registered social worker, and I work with the Internal Family Systems Method of Psychotherapy, IFS. Uh, if you're not familiar with the IFS model of therapy, you might want to have a look at Understanding the Personality System, which is on YouTube. Um, that will explain the base of what I'm going to be talking about uh, in this video. And what I'm talking about in this video is how the IFS method facilitates healing from childhood abuse and neglect. Typically, when uh, someone has been uh, abused as a kid or they've experienced neglect or abandonment, they'll have protective parts that say, ah, you know, get over it, you can't fix it, just move on. And if that was possible, that would be great. But you can't just decide to get over experiences like that. You can, however, fix them. And here's how I'm going to be talking about how that can happen. But first you need to understand what happens to a kid, right, when it's uh, in an experience of being neglected or abandoned. Uh, that's not meant to happen. We're meant to be nurtured, we're meant to be loved, we're meant to be cared for, we're meant to be supported. And so when a, a child finds itself neglected, abandoned, not taken care of, not loved, not nurtured, not um, fed, cold, it's terrifying and it can't do anything to fix it for itself. It's wholly dependent on its caregiver's parents. And it's just terrifying. Similarly, if a child experiences um, or witnesses threats or physical or sexual abuse, family violence, that's not a safe environment and it's absolutely terrifying, right, for that kid. It's really, really scary. So the system finds a way to protect itself. Of course, we have to protect ourselves, right? And fear like that um, activates an old, old part of the brain, which is often called the reptilian brain. And it's been around for thousands and thousands of years. And what the reptilian brain tells us to do is to fight, or run away, or submit, or to freeze. So this fear gets stored in the body and in a kind of felt sense of fear. And the part of the brain that watches, the more evolved part of the brain that makes sense of things, isn't available when fear is flooding the system. And the thing about this reptilian brain, this old brain, is it can't tell the difference between what's happening now, now and what's happening then. And it can't um, understand fantasy, it can't separate out fantasy from the present. And I'll give you an example of how that works. Imagine um, that you're, you've got a lemon in your hand. Right, smell it. And taking a knife to it, right? as you cut it, it releases more of its smell, and some of the juice comes out. Imagine cutting a segment of that lemon. Hold it in your hands. It's very juicy. Put it to your mouth. Bite down on it. Imagine the juice is flowing over your lips, over your tongue. And if you take time with that fantasy of a lemon, you'll notice that you begin to respond as if there's a lemon in your mouth. Your, your um, salivation kicks in. That's how the old brain works. It doesn't tell the difference between uh, present time and fantasy. So what does that mean in terms of uh, surviving abuse and neglect? Well, if your partner, if you have one, uh, shouts at you or raises their hand, it can activate that fear from childhood. Right? Because the parts of the brain that fire around that, they get activated, they don't know. They don't know that what's happening now when you're an adult is any different from what happened when you were a child. And these protectors respond automatically. Um, so your protective parts in your system, usually your firefighters will get activated and, and they'll either like, um, fight, fight back, run away, submit, or freeze. Mm -hmm. If you have had experiences as a child of being abused or neglected, these responses will feel familiar to you. So the way that the legacy of childhood abuse and neglect shows up in adults is uh, very commonly problems with intimacy or fear of commitment. And the reason for that is because relationship trauma gets activated in relationships. So the relationships you had with your parents or caregivers, if they were non-nurturing and dramatically so, um, that relationship trauma will get activated in the present day. And your protector parts cannot trust that the other person will not hurt you, reject you, or be unavailable to you. 
even if consciously you're thinking, no, I love this person, they seem like a really good choice, those protectors connected to the early um, hurt, they can't trust. And there's an ambivalence in relationships then. As the old brain says, run, not safe. And the emotional brain says, no, move towards, I need to be nurtured when I'm upset. And you can see that in children. If you've ever seen a child being hit by its parent or caregiver, um, it will want to run away and then run back to them to be um, nurtured and cared for. It's a real uh, ambivalent response from different parts of the brain and different parts of the system. So how does a, a child get through their childhood in the presence of uh, abusive or neglectful or inappropriate um, caregivers? So one of the most common protectors that shows up is one that just denies. Right? Um, it's not that bad, it's not happening, my childhood was okay. And that denying protector helps to keep the connection with the caregiver. Right? It makes the caregiver uh, okay to be around. And that's essential because you've got no choice as a kid. You are stuck in that family of origin. Another protector that will come up commonly is one that says, well, you're bad. You know, the reason that they're hurting you, the reason that they're screaming at you, the reason that they're not paying attention to you is because you're bad or you're unlovable. And that protector keeps the illusion of control, right? If I'm bad, then I can do something to change. I can get better. And I have some control over that. Then there's a the part connected, the exile that's connected to the, the protector saying you're bad, that believes I'm bad, right? I'm unlovable. And in present day, if I get close to my partner, my partner will find that out. My partner will find out the secret, the shameful secret that I'm really unlovable. And these beliefs that I'm bad, that I'm unlovable, that I'm unworthy of love, the parts that hold those beliefs are keeping you safe. Because that is a safer belief to hold than the people who are taking care of me are unpredictable, chaotic, and at any moment I could be hurt for no reason. That is too frightening, that I am not at all safe as a child in my environment. So these protectors come up to explain what's going on. It's not that bad, it's because you're bad, it's your fault. And that, that is safer than the reality. And as a child, those protectors are extraordinarily helpful for getting us through. As an adult, we can look at those protectors and say, thank you for helping me get through, and now I can do some healing work. Just in case there are parts of you that hold that belief that um, I'm unlovable or I'm unworthy, I'm going to show you a picture of a baby, and I want you to imagine telling that baby that she's unlovable, she's unworthy, and if that makes no sense to you, if it makes no sense to you to tell her that, then it doesn't make any sense for you either. 